I mean, nobody can deny that, and that's just a fact. And uh, so I, I see they have fish off over there, too, trying to do some stuff over there and stuff. So, you know, if it's working for them, you know, the, the Jared's got to do it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if it's going to pull the numbers in and it's going to get people to notice the program, and, I, I, you know, God bless them. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the uh, the whole show is now – it's like Flair and Hogan are passing the torches down now. And, you know, eventually they're bringing right. in ECW guys. Were you a fan of ECW? Did you ever watch the ECW I shows? I was a huge fan of Oh, uh, I was a huge fan of ECW. Uh, we had a – we just missed an opportunity. Dreamer called us a couple times uh, when we were out on the road, and we thought we were going to get on ECW back in the day, and we were so – uh, it just never happened. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm a, I, I'm still a huge fan of ECW old tapes and everything. And, cool. and it was great because then I got, I got to meet Sabu and travel with him with the WWA, um, and actually pretty much room together sometimes. And it was a great experience and I'm, I bought, yeah, I was a fan. Yeah, Sabu is a good friend of mine and, uh. Yeah, that would have been great if we would have had you guys over there, man. We could turn one of you guys. Uh, got to get another midget in there and bring him, make him the uh, midget killer pit bull or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. there you go, brother. <laughs> now, um, you know, we just have a couple more questions for you. Uh, one of them was, uh, what was your reason behind starting the Half Pint Brawlers? Of course, you touched down, you know, saying that you guys were bloody midgets before that, but what was the uh, reason for changing the name? Oh, this is, uh, it was, uh, Due to political correctness, when we first started, because we were doing the in-demand pay-per-views, and in-demand didn't want the uh, the name. This is what took so long to get a major company. Everybody wanted to be so politically correct right now, um, and uh, it scares networks. It scares you know some people, and even in-demand pay-per-views said we need to change the name. Uh, so, so I had to really go back in and try to get a name that's not all cutesy cutesy but kind of tells us what we're about and since we do a lot of bar room brawls we don't even have rings sometimes we're jumping off the bar tables platforms I mean just brawling in for these fans that's what I'm getting ready to do in Houston Cato and I are just doing a bar room brawl man and uh, right on the hardwood floors body slamming suplexing you name it we're doing it uh, and that's that's just what I came up with, the half pint followers. Everybody, you know, liked the name, and then actually it helped my company. I think I get more attention off of that than the bloody mages. Uh, I was really ticked off at the time, but uh, now that after I've seen what it did and it, what happened with it, I'm kind of glad it did happen. Um, but, yeah, the, the, it all started with the in-demand pay-per-views. Uh, we had to change the name for that. Yeah, I remember watching the in-demand pay-per-views. The one that sticks out the most was uh, you guys going through a hall in a hotel with one of you guys drunk and falling off with a roll cart. Yeah, that was Little Justice at the time, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I remember we're that. We're not only hardcore in the ring, we're hardcore outside the ring, my friend. <laughs> hey, now, um, <laughs> now, now, what was your initial thought when you guys were offered the contract from Spike TV? I was thrilled with that. Uh, we had a couple of network because what happened was uh, the Lumberjack crew, one of the executive producers with him, saw us when he was in college. You know, we've been at this for a while, and we were down in Louisiana doing a show, one of our local joints, and he saw the show, and it's always been in the back of his mind to do something. He called me up, said, man, we want to follow you on the road. We want to shoot a pilot, and we want to sell this thing. So I'm like, okay, you know, I heard a lot of people, but he kept calling me, and I'm like, okay, this, this guy sounds like he, he's a hard worker. And uh, he got a crew together. We put a pilot together and uh, put an unbelievable, you know, episode together. And uh, we had a couple of networks talking to us, and I love what Spike TV was saying. They were going to put us right after the Ultimate Fighter. I mean, what better time slot can I get for that? And I thought Spike was a great uh, network to fit along with what we do. And uh, I was correct. I mean, this thing's working out real great, and uh, I'm guaranteeing you're going to see a season two. That's awesome. I'm sure the fans are going to enjoy that. Now, um, what do you say to the critics who say Half Pipe Brawlers is nothing more than jackass in a wrestling ring? Well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I mean, Very true. Well, I mean, jackass has been around for 15 years. 
they're doing a, they're just finishing up their third movie, uh, and they're saying we're nothing but jackass, but a, with the wrestling ring. I so, uh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's an insult, that's a great. I just met Johnny Knoxville, man. He gives me a hug and says we're great. Uh, I, if you call me a jackass with the midget wrestling company, thank you. <laughs> thank you for calling me that crazy. That's freaking awesome. Now, um, what's a rib or a road story you can share with our listeners? What's that? What's a rib or a road story that you can share with our listeners that we haven't seen on the TV show? Uh, okay, I got one for you. Uh, we, you know, we we played a lot of ribs uh, on Turtle. Uh, the actual very first time Turtle got on the road is when we first started. Uh, I was taking some vitamins, right? Uh, my ex-wife has things called a water pill. Now, what a water pill does is it takes all your liquids out of your system immediately. Like for people that have like, maybe diabetes or so I guess and they got to, you know, get the, they got to pee a lot. You know, they got to get it out. Well, I put one of those water pills in uh, Turtle's vitamins. So when he swallowed it, right before we get ready to leave for a tour, like we'd act like we didn't, you know, you know, we're going to rib him because he's going to have to keep pulling over. Well, this thing is because he's so little affected him so bad that he had to pee every five minutes. And he didn't understand why he's had to pee. So he's, get, he's getting worried because he knows I'm going to get ticked off. But I, I'm telling him, dude, we got to go. You know, and we're, we all know. We're just laughing. Every time he goes, one time we were at the toll road in Illinois, and I, I had to pull over, and he had to run to the toll booth and then run to their bathroom because he's going to pee on himself. Well, of course, he ended up peeing on himself eventually because he, he can't hold it. And he doesn't understand what's going on. It's like he's apologizing to us. And I'm getting ticked off at him. I'm yelling at him, well, dude, we, you can, you're not going to be able to tour doing this shit, you know. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, they never could. They didn't show that one on air. But that, I'm very proud. And then he never knew. He never knew what we did until he saw the episode. Uh, you know, he saw an episode before the pre-cut. And, uh it was like a year long rib. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that that was one of the best ones. Now, you're the innovator of the twenty one dollar staple gun match. Uh what, what is that match exactly and and what made you decide to like start doing it? Well, basically, you know, I I always say midgets to like strippers. I you know, I'm always trying to do something to shock people. And uh yeah, we did the twenty one dollar it was it was kinda like I just came up with the number, like kind of like a blackjack or something, and, and uh, whoever can get that 21, you know, first would win the match. So the whole idea was to get the guy down and get as many dollars on him as possible, and then whoever reached that 21 won the match. It wasn't a pinball; it was a $21 Staples. Oh, okay. Now, um, do you enjoy doing the wrestling part or the comedy and stunts more? I I enjoy it all. Uh, that's what I like to make this this different. Um, just because I grew up with the background of so many different things, uh, you know, trying to be the actor, doing the stuntman work, wrestling. Why not put it all in one and make a big fun show? Uh, you know, that's one thing about the half pipe balls that makes us different, man. We don't got we don't got eighteen guys, twenty guys to put on a three hour show, man. We got four to six of us. And uh, we got to do a lot of different things to entertain the people, uh, and you know, make something different. Because I think they come in, they're not, they're not sure what to expect. So I think that's why I like the name Half Pint Brawlers. We're not a, I'm not calling it a, a total wrestling company. We're just the Half Pint Brawlers. That's our brand, and we, I think that's what kept us around for 15 years. Because every time they come back, it's something different. And uh, we got the stand-up. We got the jackass stunts. I got a midget male stripper. I got some great wrestling. I got it all. And uh, it's, it, it, I think it brings not only wrestling fans in, it brings other fans in because of all the craziness. Now, one of our listeners in the chat room, uh, the dude would like you to expand on that. How are midgets like strippers? 
How, no, I didn't say they're not. Oh, okay. Midgets are like strippers because if you give us $1 bills, we'll staple them all over each other's body for your long-legged pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one last question I have for you is what can fans expect out of the rest of the season of Hot Pine Brawlers? You know, more craziness, better stunts. And our last episode is the most dramatic episode that we have. Um, I had to come up. I had to come up with a ten midget battle royal. So I had to go find midgets all over the nation, and uh, there was a lot of drama there. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but these guys, you know, thought they were wrestlers. And uh, I find out real quick what really, how much talent they had. And I flew all these people in all over the nation out to L.A. It was my big, first big show in L.A. I wanted to make a great impression out there because I knew it was going to lead to bigger and better things. So you're going to really see the business tonight on the last episode with me. And uh, actually, and you're going to get to see a 10 midget battle royal, man. That's awesome. I'd like to thank you for coming on the broadcast today, and I want to tell all of our fans to check out halfpintbrawlers.com. Yeah, make sure you check us out Wednesday night, 11 Eastern, 10 Central.